All right, we're back live. Take a few phone calls for those that are holding Steve, Bill, Ryan, and others right at the end of this hour. But for uh, most of this hour, we're joined by Ian Rutherford Plymer. He is an Australian geologist and an academic. He is a critic of um, the fact that they're claiming that global warming is man-made. And he has a book that's a bestseller uh, on the issue, Heaven and Earth, Global Warming, The Missing Science. He is critical of the greenhouse gas politics and argues that extreme environmental changes are inevitable. Well, that's what the geological record shows. And so he joins us now from Australia very early in the morning, what, 5.30 in the morning, 5.20 in the morning. Uh, it's, it's now five minutes to eight in okay. inland Australia in the desert where it's beautifully warm, not a cloud in the sky. We've just survived a massive dust storm. Okay, good, good. Because, you know, the guys told me if I had you on the weekday show, it would be 5 in the morning. That's why we're having you on Sunday, so it could be 8 in the morning. Well, uh, Doc, it's... Uh, doctor, it's great to have you here with us. Break it down. The new religion. You know, the media tries to make fun of you for that, but in the Biological Diversity Assessment 96, uh, in their own statements, they say this is a guy or religion, don't they? Well, very much so. And if we look back in the past, we've had massive climate changes. They have been extremely rapid. They've been driven by processes other than carbon dioxide. So if you want to ignore all of that, and say, oh, no, no, just because we're living on Earth now, it's due to we humans, then you're really taking a religious view because you're ignoring all of the contrary evidence. There's a lot of skeptics out there. If you were on, say, national television in the U.S. and had five minutes to boil it down, you know, just the basics for people, what would you say to them? I would say look into the past. Look into what's happened in your life. And in this century, for the last eight years, we've had cooling, yet carbon dioxide has been going up. If we look back 2,000 years, we can see it was very warm in Roman times and very warm in medieval times. It was about five degrees warmer. Sea level didn't rise. People didn't die. In fact, we had a thriving population. And the cold periods of the Dark Ages and the Little Ice Age are when we had massive depopulation, when people died like flies. If you look back further in time, in archaeological time, we can see that every time it's warmed up in one of these warming and cooling cycles, 800 years later, the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere has risen. So there's absolutely no relationship. And if we look further back in time, we can see that we've had six great ice ages. Two of these were at sea level, at the equator, and five of the six had the atmospheric carbon dioxide content much, much higher, up to a thousand times higher than now. So there is no relationship. No matter what time scale you look at, carbon dioxide is a two-bit player, it's a follower, and it doesn't drive climate change. Doctor, from your research, have you found, because this is what I found, that the establishment knows carbon dioxide is part of the carbon cycle. We have sunlight, we have water, we have carbon dioxide, we have oxygen. you got to have that or there's no life on this planet. Well, exactly that they right. cynically that they cynically chose carbon dioxide as a way to tax and regulate all human activity. <laughs> well, yes, very much so. It's a, it's a tax on thin air, and the governments have been trying to tax us for all sorts of things for a very long period of time. So now we're going to have a tax on uh, cows farting and belching. We humans are having a tax on carbon dioxide. We're going to be taxed for everything. Ultimately, we will be taxed for how quickly our fingernails grow. And that's not just you saying that. Under Obama's law he's trying to pass to get us lined up for this global treaty, they're now admitting it's going to tax sheep, cows, pigs, chickens, taxes on having more than one child. Well, very much so. In, in, in your country, your proposed cap and trade is actually fairly mild compared with what the government of Australia has tried to do, and their tax will send everyone broke. It will send all of the agricultural industries broke, the mining industries, the smelting industries, and the agricultural and uh, manufacturing industries just will move to somewhere else. So this is a wonderful mechanism of increasing the bureaucracy having more people in government, counting everything we do and controlling our life. This is, I think, the ultimate aim of government, to control us. 
It really is a stroke of genius, though, in the Club of Rome back in the 60s first put forward the white papers to Western governments from Australia to Canada to the United States and England, Germany, to tax air. Uh, the current head of the Council on Foreign Relations, Richard N. Haas, wrote in 92 that it was the perfect thing to make humans the enemy and the state waging war against humanity. Very cold-blooded uh, quotes by these people. When you researched them and wrote your book about them, you talk about how it's their religion. From your research, Doctor, what is their religion at its foundations? My research really shows that it's a form of neo-eugenics. Uh, well, it's a form of religion, in my view, that has replaced failed Western socialism. It's replaced failed Western Christianity. It's a religion that's based out of the cities. It's an urban atheistic religion. These are people who claim that they're environmentalists, yet they have absolutely no contact whatsoever with nature. They never, ever go bush. They never um, plant crops. They don't know where their food comes from. They don't know where their electricity comes from. And they get all of their information off the internet or off a screen. So we have a total disconnect of these people who have the strong body of voting power. Governments listen to them. And those people based in basements in buildings all over the country are those who control what we should think, what we should eat, how much energy we should use. And I argue that these people are taking our freedoms from us. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, have, have you heard about the recent book that got a lot of attention? It's actually a compendium or a government proposal white paper written with government and foundation funding, Eco Science, by John P. Holdren, the White House uh, science czar, that really admits that environmentalism is just eugenics and calls for a planetary government to reduce the population by 75% and calls for destroying the industrial base? Yes, I'm very much aware of Holdren's work. Um, previous to his government uh, position now, I'm very much aware of his views. Uh, and I, I think this is something we should be very, very careful of, uh, about because to embrace environmentalism is in many ways to actually keep the third world in its third world state, to keep people dying in the third world, to stop them using modern genetic engineering, to stop them using modern power systems. And we have to remember that half of the third world don't have running water and don't have electricity. And when we look at some of the other great political movements of the past, we saw the rise of national socialism in Europe from a green movement. That's where it came from. It wasn't a right-wing movement at all. So there are some rather frightening parallels in history, and this is why I use a lot of history in my book uh, that's um, recently come out, because we learn so much from history. Absolutely. I have uh, read large sections uh, of your book, haven't gotten through all of it yet with time, but I have to say I learned a lot, but I've also confirmed a lot of separate research I've done in my film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, that's exactly what I found. I thought I knew history about Hitler, but they don't really teach. He was a vegetarian environmentalist who believed he needed to kill the majority of the world to save the earth, uh, all for racial hygiene. Our guest, uh, Dr. Plimmer, straight ahead after this quick three-minute break after the news, Infowars.com is the website.